Hi, it's Joy and Tank. you're watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier Season 1, Episode 1, New World Order. I'm so excited. Um, WandaVision was fantastic. If that is a sign for where the Disney Plus Marvel series is going to go, we're in for a wild ride. Um, this, I think, was actually the show I was most excited for when I first heard about it. Um, so I just... I'm so excited. Um, I did watch the trailer and it just looks brilliant. I have no idea where the story is going to take us, but I know it's going to be amazing. Um, you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon, along with all my reactions. And I am ready to see Sam and Bucky and Sharon again. Let's go. Hey, sweetheart. It's a big ask, big responsibility. But you are more than worthy of. This has to be subtle. <laughs> I mean, I adore Sam. He's very capable of this, but I don't think the Falcon is very subtle in the sense that he's very clearly for the American military. Oh, they've already done it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Can anyone else fly this plane? Hmm. Okay, autopilot. Autopilot's good. Why do they want this captain? Jesus Christ. Excellent. Good. Oof, yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Hehehe, <laughs> not my helicopter. Okay, Sam, you've got this. Oh, there's another fucking helicopter! This is insane! <laughs> this bit, he's still around. Is he gonna survive? I'm really stressed this dude's gonna die. <laughs> Oh great. We want a world that's unified without borders. So you can see why a lot of people are into that. Yeah, like I think a world without borders would be amazing, but I don't know how practical it is. I track the chatter, see what they're saying. And I doubt their methods are very good. <laughs> Definitely is. Yeah. Thank you, Captain America. You are worthy of it. I think in a way part of mourning Steve, there's he would as much as he knows Steve had a long and happy life, it would be so hard to just pick up something that was your friend, that like symbolizes everything they were. But you are worthy of it, and if you choose to take it up, you're going to be brilliant Captain America. And if you want to stay as the Falcon and not be Captain America at all, support that too. Oh. It wasn't your fault. Oh, Bucky. I love you. You're going to do the notebook thing? Why? So much. I love this. For good. That is such a way that he could use his skill set and help himself heal. Can't do anything illegal. Hmm. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. It's a big one. Then why isn't there rule number one? <laughs> Bucky. I I mean, he wanted to shoot him, so... <laughs> oh my god, I love him so much! <laughs> I love, though, he's so much more himself than we've seen him in ages. <laughs> oh. I just went from one fight to another for 90 years. I know, sweetheart. 
I love how much time they've given this scene. <laughs> oh. Is this one of his amendments to look out for this man because of what happened with his son? Okay. <laughs> I'm feeling too many feelings already. I love this show already because I love these characters. Hmm. It is hard on the people that were left behind in the snap and just the people that are left behind when you're fighting and everything. I love this. We can take a loan and consolidate everything. It'll take down your money. After everything he's done, he should not have to worry about money. You think I didn't try the bank? Trust me. If you try and don't <laughs> yes. Just don't get your hopes up too much, but try. That is all you can do. Well, if that's not the most adorably old fashioned thing anyone's ever done. <laughs> He's adorable and old fashioned. Sound like my dad. <laughs> Wait, how old are you? 106. <laughs> It's gonna really tell him the truth. <sighs> You're gonna tell him the truth. That's something you could talk about with Sam or with your therapist or and this guy's either gonna be a main character or die. <laughs> oh wow. So just they're the help they help the escape. So I don't know how jurisdiction works here, but I don't have to place you under arrest. <laughs> oh god. Oh god! I knew it stopped me. <laughs> yes, yes. I've been gone. Like a yeah. billion other people. But if you look at our plan, I have government contracts. So that's proof of earnings. And I know for a fact that we qualify for an FDA loan. Find the Alzheimer's. Sure. You don't get to come back here and try to right your wrong just because you couldn't deal with those. Mm. You don't know what happened these last five years. Sam. Sometimes it's okay to move on. It's gonna get called away. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking? But I'll circle back to you. Being a real person who embodies America's greatest. What are they doing? Your new Captain America. What? Oh my God! He gave them that shield, and they just passed it right on to someone else. Disgusting. Make a new hero if you need one. Sorrel, Sam. Ugh. That was such a good episode. Um, 
And I don't care, there will probably be people out there who will be complaining that the story didn't kickstart instantly, but do you know what I love? I love that we just had an episode to just sit with these characters, to see where they are right now, to kind of get a feel for the way the world is right now you know with one division it was very contained to what was happening in there in that scenario we kind of got glimpses of the chaos and everything that was happening in the wider world but understandably so it was a more to contained show with far from home that was set a few months in the future and it was very much you know peter's experience plus just a lot of other stuff going on so i think this show so far has done a brilliant job of really showing you firsthand the struggles of being someone that came back five years later you know the bank guy trying to be like you've had no income for five years obviously <laughs> like you know just come out and say oh because of the the blip we can't keep giving loans or something but yeah so i love that we got to really spend that time learning more about sam seeing bucky now and i'm so thankful for these shows even if this is all we ever get of them because in the movies, there isn't the time to give every single character a layered backstory, to give every single character the time they deserve. And that's what we got with Wanda in WandaVision. We're getting that with Bucky and Sam here. I'm so excited. Um, so I'll start with Sam. I like that we got to see that he still works for the military. He still does, you know, he, he still, I mean, he saved that guy's life. He did such brilliant work for the military. And yet he is earning such a small, like, yeah, he said, like, we've got government contracts, that's proof of money coming in to try and get the loan. Someone doing what Sam does with Sam's skill set that, you know, the things that Sam brings to the table that nobody else could do should be earning enough to refurbish the boat. You know, even if she kind of has to say, to, well, like, you know, I've got enough in the meantime to make do and then we could, you know, I just, it's ridiculous that, you know, bankers and people that sit in offices as CEOs can earn millions and then people that do a really important work in the real world as well as in Marvel get not don't get enough to get by on it's ridiculous um but I loved seeing Sam's family you know we kind of we know enough a little bit about Sam we know obviously that he was a veteran or at least he's kind of still active now but that he was in the um Falcon program we know knew his friendship with Steve you know there's a lot about Sam that we know and love but to see his sister to see his nephews to sort of Again with Sam, you know, Monica, her mother died while she was away and that is horrific for Sam. He missed five years of the, his nephew's lives. There were just so many different facets to this and his sister was left, you know, their parents were dead. She's a widower, she's a widow, sorry, and just left with nothing and struggling to get by. And it's just, I think it's so fascinating to think of the world because obviously the way they talk about all the chaos of everyone coming back, it's all chaos now. I guess, in a way, five years is probably around the time that people would have been starting to get a grip on the original chaos, starting to get a grip on like how to cope with half the population, and suddenly it's back. So I think while it is definitely a good thing, while it's definitely still a win, it's going to take another a period of time and adjustment to get through it. And as with all great crises, the governments don't really care about the little people for all that they say. We can see it in the COVID pandemic, we can see it everywhere. Um, so finding out about Sam and his parents and the boat that they grew up on, that that boat is so important to them, that it has been their business and livelihood and it is now not profitable anymore. That's such a horrible thing to face, something that was so intrinsically part of your life and your family. And his sister, oh, I can't remember her name, I'm so sorry. She has had to kind of come to terms with losing it, with giving it up, with selling it and making a little bit of money and then finding another way to live. Whereas for Sam, it's very fresh. And um, from what they seem to talk about, there's very much, I guess, kind of the dynamic there of he left home and joined the military. She was the child that stayed home and dealt with the hard stuff, dealt with the illnesses and the money troubles and everything. And Sam was off doing something that, again, you can't fault him for. He, he was someone that joined the military because he wanted to do good. He didn't join the military because he wanted to be a dick. So... It's just that kind of complicated dynamics that real families have. Often in families, there is, you know, if there are multiple children, there is the child that stayed home with the parents and there's the child that got to go free. That is a realistic thing. And I think Sam is someone that wants to believe the best in everything. And I just, I'm, I'm hoping he's going to find a way to get the money to refurbish this boat. But at the same time, they're about to have to be embarking on a, Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, we're not going to have six episodes, I believe it's a six episode season, of just Bucky and Sam's lives. Now, I would watch six episodes of just Bucky and Sam getting by in the world without any extra plot. I would love that, but <laughs> that's not what this show is. Um, 
so I really hope for his sake that they're able to kind of find a way to turn it around to keep the boat or that he's able to come to terms with the boat yes it's something that means the world to you yes it's an important symbol but the memories will remain even if you sell it and then obviously the other side with Sam was seeing his struggle with the Captain America shield <sighs> We knew when Steve gave it to him, Sam wasn't like, whoop, yep, I'm off, I'll be Captain America. I kind of hope that this show, I don't know if it's going to multiple seasons or throughout the movies or something, that we are going to see Sam go on a journey to where he feels comfortable having the shield. Because as things stand, it is in a far less worthy person. Who knows who this guy is? I hope that, that actor is worthy to become the most hated man in the world. Jokes. The character, you know. Obviously, the actor does not deserve the single, a single drop of hate for, yes. Um... I just, oh, that was gut-wrenching. And so definitely I think Sam, Sam, Steve was not only his friend, he was his hero. He was someone that he had looked up to before they became friends. And he was just, they had such a bond that they formed so quickly. And those kind of bonds are special when you meet someone and you just connect. And as much as, you know, he looked up to Steve, he thought Steve was just as much as my mate Steve. You know, he didn't, I just, oh, for him, that shield became everything because Steve became everything and he didn't feel ready to take on that mantle and now some random guy is taking it on. Uh, it's not good. Um, definitely you could see the government being like, oh yeah, we need a PR win. Oh, some dude can have the shield. And to be honest, I imagine that they will most likely use this Steve as they originally were using this Steve, this Captain America as they were originally using Steve, you know, just kind of promotional videos send him into some place film a scene where it looks like he's doing brave stuff everyone can sit at home going oh thank goodness you've got captain america and just you know i don't know maybe this guy is super skilled i but i doubt it <laughs> i'm very intrigued though i was not expecting that at the end even when he kind of put the shield he gave the shield up um to the museum and like it was gonna be part of steve's legacy that was in steve that was in pride of place in steve's um sort of in a way from became a memorial with the museum and now it's been given to someone else i was kind of thinking oh what if a bad guy steals it but yep of course um so for sam i think who's really struggling with this legacy with whether he is worthy of wielding the shield of following in steve's footsteps he is by far the most worthy person compared with stupid new guy <laughs> who i don't know maybe we'll get to know the new guy and he'll be like the best but i doubt it um so that was just a lot for sam to deal with and i'm really like i think i was in the middle of saying i hope we're going to reach the point where sam feels comfortable taking on the shield and the other half of the show bucky oh just my soul gets me no wonder he's having the specific nightmare of that memory of that thing that happened because that is something that he's trying to make amends and Oh, he just gets me. I think what I love the most, in a positive way, Bucky, before we get to all the heart-wrenching stuff, is the fact that we are seeing far more of the Bucky we knew and loved in Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, as anyone who goes through a traumatic experience, a life-changing traumatic experience, he's never going to be that exact same carefree guy that he was. But we're seeing more of that humour, more of that spark in him. And he is healing, and that means the world to me. Now, does he still have a long way to go? An unimaginably long way to go? Yes. But I'm so happy to see that that glimmer of Bucky is back. Um, I also love his haircut. Can't lie. <laughs> but I just think he's himself again. It's a bit like the doctor said, you know, like the um, you've got your mind back in the sense that he's been that, that piece in Wakanda and time since he is Bucky again. He's making his own decisions. He's not being controlled. He's not being hunted. I don't know what the plot of the show is going to be moving forwards, but he is still himself once again for the first time. And I love that he's been pardoned, thank God, because like he, as soon as you make sure he's no longer brainwashed, he is technically innocent of every single crime that he committed because if you're brainwashed into doing it, he had no control. So, and the thought that anyone would arrest him would be well, stupid. I know. I'm not verbalising things very well today, I'm sorry. But I love that he's in therapy. I get that it's um, Lord, law and ordered? Court mandated, I guess. Kind of, you know, he has to be in therapy. But I think, A, I like that this show is kind of normalising therapy. Everyone, 
it should happen. I mean, I, I'm kind of in the belief that in the same way that everyone needs to go to the dentist for a checkup, everyone should go to therapy every now and then. But especially if you've had any kind of significant life-changing trauma in your life, you should go to therapy. And I like that he's kind of using, he's kind of helping him, he's kind of talking, kind of not. I hope that at the very least, it's going to push him to trust people to look for friends like Sam. Sam is someone that knows the whole gnarly truth. He knows every detail. I mean, he doesn't know every detail, but he knows this bad stuff. You know, even when he was making friends, even if we just thought he was making friends with the old guy because, you know, he got along with them because they were both old, or when he was going on a date with someone, it's not something you can sit down and go, hey, I'm 104, I think. I'm 104 and um, I was brainwashed by Hydra for a lot of years, committed a lot of assassinations, but I'm better now. Also, I have a metal weapon arm nice to meet you. You know, I feel like there's just so much there that it's going to be so hard for him to form any attachments with anybody that doesn't already know, because that is such a big factor that, you know, he'd kind of have to reach the point of trusting them to let them know and how they take it. It's going to be hard for anyone to deal with, especially someone that's been through things that Bucky's been through. I like that we saw he kind of is able to go after the Hydra people that are st or the people that are still in positions of power and get them arrested and that he says his thing about like I am no longer the Winter Soldier, I am Bucky Barnes, I'm James Buchanan Barnes. Like yes, you are. I mean this show is called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier so if he wants to use that as his persona and make it his own, that's okay. And if he wants to shed it completely, also okay. Um, and it is one of those things that is just, from the point of view of anybody whose loved ones he killed, I can understand struggling to see the difference between Bucky and brainwashed person but I think a good person with enough time away from it you would be able to understand that he is not the person who did those things that if someone were to brainwash you any one of us could be brainwashed into killing people so I just I want him to be happy it's the middle of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I want it to be happy Hopefully if he can find Sam and they can kind of have their band. I mean, Sam's been texting him, which I adore, but if they can kind of get their friendship back, that can be someone that they've both lost a best friend figure. They've both lost that one person in their lives they depended on in that way, that they can be that for each other. Um, and I kind of like the, the laws, nothing illegal. And he was like, I just did some stuff that was a little bit illegal. And then no one was hurt. You know, I went over to go and give him a message and someone tried to shoot me, so I had to hurt them. I loved that kind of scene because... He didn't do anything that bad, you know, that guy will be fine. And he did try to shoot him. The car just scared her a bit. She deserved to be scared of it. And then he finally got to say his mantra. And obviously the people he wants to make amends to, that he, people that he hurt, that is the heart, the side of the coin that just rips your heart out, stomps all over it. The fact that that old man who he's befriended, he's looking out for, they have lunch regularly. Oh, it just must be destroying him inside and no wonder he's having that nightmare. He needs to talk about this with his therapist because she will be able to talk to him about whether he feels it's enough to just be a supportive presence in that man's life. So he's not alone. Um, whether he feels like that will be enough in terms of making amends because if he tells him the truth and the guy slams the door in his face and is now alone and knows that this man he's had a connection with was the man that killed his son, you know, maybe it could put him in a worse off state. Or, it, as I think he feels the need to do, tell him the truth, put his mind, give him closure in the sense that he knows what happened. And, oh, I just, it's so sad. Um, it's sad enough to think of, like, the, the good people, potentially the buck he had to kill, but the people that were just collateral damage is almost worse. And I feel like Bucky has made, you know, he has a real friendship with this man. He, he cares about him. And he's building up a little life for himself that is going to be shattered the minute he tells the truth. I don't know that he has a future with the, the nice lady he went on a date with, but, you know, she was cool. I liked her. So, yeah, Bucky's destroying me his face when he had to go and talk. And, you know, he went there. He wanted to tell him the truth. He wanted to finally let him know what happened to his son. But this is the one that he most especially needs to talk about with his therapist or with Sam or with me, because I think that is the sort of burden no one should have to deal with alone. You know, he still feels guilt over what he did, which is what shows you he's a good person because he was brainwashed. It wasn't him. Oh, I'm very emotional. So yeah, my heart is broken. My heart is shattered into pieces all over again for Bucky. For Sam, I'm very sad because things he has done, the good he has done in this world, and he's his family still have to struggle to get by, is wrong. 
I need them to team up soon. Um, I loved this episode. I am someone, like I said at the beginning of this review portion, the fact that we had an hour, more or less, of just checking in with the characters before the miss. Yes, we have had the flag smashers. We know kind of, I guess, they're going to be the big bad. We had, you know, the LSAF are out there as well. Like, we know, we're kind of, we've seen bits and pieces of the wider world. We've met our interpreter or guy on the ground analyst dude who got himself beaten up. Thank God he's not dead. I was like, he seems nice. Don't kill him. Um, we've seen kind of elements of what I imagine will become the wider plot or those are elements they're building up for, for future movies, I don't know. We've also got the Captain America, there is going to be some conflict there. I don't know whether it's going to be the government using it for bad aims and they want to get the shield back or something. I don't know where we're going to go exactly in the plot. I have seen the trailer, but I try not to look too much into everything to see like details. Um, while it has laid the groundwork for the rest of the season, it has just been a blessing to me that we got to have this time to check in with these characters to see where their emotional state is and to get a better picture of the world we are in and I'm very emotional now about them I, I just I would like to hug them both I don't think either of them would allow me to hug them <laughs> if I saw around a bridge and walked out like hug me but yeah it was brilliant I love this show so much a reminder that you can find the unedited version of my reaction on my patreon and thank you so so much for watching I cannot wait to watch more